is Luke Atkinson. He's, he's uh, from Checker Demon Tattoos in Stuttgart. How are you doing? Hello, mate. Good to see you. Good uh, Good morning, rather. Yeah. Yeah, morning for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ching. <Cheers. laughs> well, so you've like been good. Yeah, yeah. It's been uh, you know I've been been keeping busy and uh, getting uh, thing, things have changed a lot. I've noticed there's, there's a lot of people doing like um, private studios now. A lot of people mm. getting out of these big crammed shops where they got ten artists like a convention now. Now everybody's kind of, uh, you know, doing their, their private thing, it looks like. Okay. Well, like you're, of, you're a step ahead with that. Yeah. 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 Luckily, I did that before the pandemic hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I've spent also the last kind of year working on a, a little space at home, too. Oh, beautiful. Nothing, nothing that's actually happening at the moment, but something that definitely is kind of the future sort of thing that I'd like to concentrate on. I mean, I'd, I'd love to keep the shop and work a little bit in the shop, but not as a, a kind of full-time thing. Right, right. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah. we're shut again. Oh, really? Oh, we're, we've been in lockdown. This year, I've worked three weeks. Fuck's sakes, eh? Three weeks. <laughs> it's 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 been the longest holiday I've ever had. It's it's yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, last so, year I did three months. I think it was. That was that was weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was same that, thing. With it's like uh, I stopped in November, and I've worked three weeks since November. Oh, you've only worked three weeks. Yeah. Wow. So it's it's yeah it's it it is a a sort of strange climate, but I mean I'm I must admit I'm not one of those people kind of desperate and you know it's like uh, I've I've really enjoyed the time to do other stuff, mm. enjoy myself with books you said sometimes you you even get to sit down on the computer and go visit a, a cool museum somewhere or yeah catch up with people that normally I'm probably too tired to talk to or you know it's it's actually there's been lots of positive sides to it get work done for when it does start um yeah like I say working on this studio at home and Spending time with the family. No, yeah. I don't think we've ever been that close. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but it's, uh, no, no, it's, it's, um, it's, it's definitely kind of given a, a, a special space for thinking about what's to come and how, how you actually want to approach it. I mean, also at my age, I'm, I'm kind of like, thinking about exactly what I want, you know? It's yeah. Like, no, I think how, the how do I wanna how do I wanna continue? What it what is it I love about this still? Yeah. And um do I wanna do some other stuff in between as well? Um yeah, I get I guess a lot of people have had that. Like you say, you know, like changing from big studios to more private stuff and it's kind of it's poked people a little it's like you know are you really happy you know it's like <laughs> funny story because I was on my way actually from from England I was staying at home for I think it was for Christmas or something and I phoned the Dutchman and said you know John um I'd like to get tattooed. Um, I'm going to be flying back to Japan and I'll stop off in Canada and come and get tattooed. Um, do, you, do you have time? Do you, do you have space for me? And he's like, oh, yeah, just come in on like Monday. Blah, 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 blah. 
So I flew into Vancouver from 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 London, and find, found my way to New Westminster, and he was on that drag back then. Right. So I got, I I found myself a little shitty motel. Oh my god, it was a shithole. Yeah. <sighs> Um, so yeah, parked myself up, had a little sleep, got rid of the jet lag, had a wander around, and it was it was quite quiet in those days around there. Um, anyway, showed up at his shop on Monday, and it was shut, and I was like, "Fuck, have I got the day wrong?" Or like, what? But so anyway, I carried on wandering around, ended up in a bar. I think it was the strip joint down the street, and you know, had a few beers and wandered back to the shop. It was still shut, so I had something to eat, slept it off again, and then came back on the Tuesday and walked in, and he said. Uh, Oh, hello, hello. And I said, yeah, my, my name's Luke. I, I called you about an appointment. And he goes, oh, yeah, 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 great. We could, you know, we can sort something out. He said, I'm busy today, but, you know, maybe we can work on it like this week. And I was like, yeah, but I came for an appointment yesterday. And he said, where have you come from? <laughs> I was like, I just flew in from London. He said, fuck, I thought you were from around here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway it it was great we went for dinner and you know it kind of it rolled really nicely and he he got a design together and we got i got tattooed that week oh nice but, um yeah it was it was uh, uh, my first experience of new westminster <laughs> which was um yeah an eye opener <laughs> It's good to see you, fucking hell. I, I mean, last time we met was um, Montreux. Yeah, it was Montreux. What a show that was. That was incredible. Oh, it was fantastic, wasn't it? It was. It really, really was. Really, really. I, I, I so enjoyed it. I had no idea what it was going to be like. Driving down with the checker and literally, like, coming into Montreux it was like, Fucking now, this is like fancy pantsy, yeah, with all the hotels and the lakeside and the casino and stuff, and and driving down and then like parking my car, and, yeah, kind of round the back on the way into the show, and they were like, no, 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 come straight in, drive straight into the show, and it was just like, ah, oh, this is awesome, yeah, <laughs> and then having a little. Um, welcome drink by the by the lake there the little that little bar on the lake it was just oh, it was perfect yeah oh, we had beautiful. beautiful weather there's so much history there all the all the uh jazz music oh not just jazz musicians all the rock musicians that have played through there i didn't yeah. realize that it was that was where it was until after the fact i was like oh wait a minute that's like yeah. where stevie ray vaughn and like all these famous heads were playing exactly exactly Nice vibes. Yeah, yeah. And that art show was just like life changing to see the scale of the amount of work upstairs there. Like, wow, you know, like the absolutely unbelievable body of work. And this, this is just a tiny part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not even yeah. the whole body of work. Oh, he's an animal. I mean, yeah, but with with like uh, that's that's actually a great thing that's going on at the moment. Um, Philip and the whole family have continued this exhibition they've been having with the family. Mm. So the family art exhibition. I think there was one in Saint Croix and then in Nantes in France, and now it's in Basel in a big museum in Basel. The, the, the Tinguili, um, or I can't remember how to pronounce that right, name. That's yeah. really, That's a tongue twister in itself. <laughs> and so, yeah, but boys and girls, if you're interested in a, a little excursion this summer, I think it's on till September, October, get your asses down there, um, COVID permitting, of course. I think it, it, it should be okay in the summer, yeah. But it, it'll be a beautiful little... Uh, trip to go down there and see it 
Yeah, wall to wall, literally ceiling to floor. Oh, huge! Yeah, huge. I I I did have a little bird's eye view of it, so uh, definitely worth it. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> Let's kind of take it back to the beginning with you. Um, before before Germany and everything, where where were you from? Well, I'm I'm originally from England. I was born in London, grew up in a place called Cheltenham till I was um, finished with school. Then I was a professional punk rocker doing pretty much fuck all for a good while, painting leather jackets and uh, listening to a lot of music and uh, discovered smoking dope. So, uh, yeah, that's a full-time job in itself after being at school. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that that was good. I, I'd already... Um, kind of acquired a, a, a sort of interest in tattooing but it was it was very yeah kind of this is a dream but how do you kind of approach this thing yeah I had no idea about it um, and I ended up actually moving from from England after about a year of not being at work I went to Germany came to Germany to Cologne and I, I started working as a um, painting porcelain, like 3D pictures made out of um, porcelain. So little stuff grandmas would put on the wall and stuff. So um, I did this for a good while. And while I was doing that, I kind of still had this dream of getting into tattooing and I'd started getting tattooed and, um, yeah, and that that's kind of where my tattoo trip started is this interest and and then kind of getting these little chances to sort of try a little bit of tattooing here and there and so um the I guess the the biggest breakthrough was hanging out I was still into punk and hanging out in these like squats and stuff with other punks and skinheads and these guys, one night, these guys had like sat down and decided to make their own tattoo machine. So they made, we made it out of a, a cassette player, a bent spoon and some bits of pens and stuff. And so we got, we built this thing and we were like, oh, great, you know, got it running and everything out a bit of ink. And then they were like, well, you know, you know more about tattooing than we do. And I was like, no, I don't. I don't know fuck all about it. <laughs> yeah, but you can draw a bit. So <laughs> here you go. <laughs> and there were like a couple of guys that wanted to get tattooed. Oh, my God. I mean, I didn't have any fear about it, which was bizarre if I think back. It was like, okay. What do you want? Like we do a skull with a German helmet, and like drew this thing on with a a, a biro, and and just went hell for leather. And then like suddenly in the middle of it all, it broke down, and like it, it was a fucking nightmare, yeah. But it this was my first actual action of like tattooing with a machine, um, and after that, then. I managed to find out a little bit more information and I started to go to visit tattooers and stuff. Um, so this was like the beginning of the road, if you like, um, of, yeah, concentrating on like where, how, how can I get more into this? How can I learn more? How can I see more? And um, I think the bottom line was, on your own it's very 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 difficult so it was like trying to get into tattoo shops where they would actually like let you kind of look at what they're doing and stuff and in those days it was an absolute no-no i mean you just get kicked out straight away so it was like this fucking door slamming in your face the whole time and <laughs> Um, so it was, yeah, then it was like just getting tattooed and, and keep 
pushing this kind of interest, not letting this let get like let you down, you know, like this this constant kind of negative action that was happening. Yeah. Um, so then, um, yeah, I I I'd, I'd like continue to get a little bit more tattoos. I guess um, at this point, I've been tattooed by Hank in Amsterdam. Oh, nice. Um, he did my first kind of machine done tattoo. Wow, he um, first. Yeah, this is this, so so you can imagine. Like I don't know if the people out there they know Hank Shaw. Um, I was in Amsterdam and. Um, Hank wasn't actually in the shop when I arrived there, so I walked down into Hanky Panky's place in the, the, the old red light district, and there were just three Hells Angels in the shop. Um, so I was stood there with a leather jacket on and these two red Mohicans, <laughs> and like looking around going, like, fucking who do I ask for a tattoo? I didn't know who worked there or anything. And I was like, yeah, so but, um, I'm interested in getting a tattoo. Well, sit the fuck down right here. <laughs> you know, and I was like, fuck, okay. And so I sat in this chair and just waited for, I don't know, I can't remember. It was like 10, 15 minutes and then Hank came in and he's like, so what do you want? <laughs> and I had this like homemade drawing I'd done it myself and it had like, like you know this punk with like this kind of leather jacket on and stripy trousers I guess it was probably like this big huh. with these two Mohicans and stuff and it, I've got actually I'm quite happy he said okay so that's going to be 200 guilders and I was like, fuck, I haven't got 200 guilders. I've got like 50. He said, well, you get the head then. <laughs> <laughs> so it was brilliant. He's like, he sat me down and he just did like two, like a cross on the top of my arm. And then did this skull with two red Mohicans. I think we just were straight machine. 15 minutes straight with the machine. Yeah. And it's still there. Here you go. Cool. Nice. Look how so symmetrical this, that is, right? For for no stencil, just completely true freehand, and it's perfectly yeah, symmetrical. Exactly. And it's yeah, it's still there. I mean, it's fucking what's that? Fifteen years old. Wow. So that's yeah, we're we're bang on forty years. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, it was, yeah, so this constant kind of getting a little tattoo and then like kind of feeling out with tattooers, like, you know, what do I do to like get more of this kind of magic, this, you know, I mean, you can't, I, I remember coming out of that shop and just thinking, fucking Mr. Tough Guy, you know, like I'm going out, let's go out and celebrate and have some beers and go go to a disco and like uh, oh it was just uh it was amazing and uh, the feeling of getting tattooed and this this world of um the unknown behind the door and 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 this kind of yeah these people you know it was just it was the sensation of those days was just full of wow like enticement but at the same time, like the fear of fucking God, you know, like as you walk into these places and yeah, very, very, very much um, just this, yeah, this, this kind of stepping into a different time zone. Yeah. Like something like the TARDIS, you know, it's like you're yeah. just getting zoomed off into another world. Uh, um so yeah it was it was constantly growing so i would get these these little snippets of you know stuff that was that was what i was interested in um but had no idea i mean really no idea of like could i actually do it could i 
um, yeah, what was it, what was it all about? It was just every time a little taster that made it more and more interesting. You know? um, so yeah, those those were the, the the first sort of yeah, say that, and in Germany these were these were the first experiences that made me kind of like now I want to try and get a machine because it it, it was difficult so I thought I'd try it on my own um, so I got a machine of course like a lot of people and and thought yeah no problem I can do this you know? <laughs> make a little studio at home and start making designs and making your own little homestead where you think that people are going to flood in and get tattooed and it's like um before you before you did all the porcelain uh um artwork were you were you doing drawings and stuff like that as a kid yes i i was like i think while i was at school um, I really enjoyed drawing. I wouldn't say that I drew like all the time. I, I was kind of um, interested in say uh, around the age of 10 or something. I had these like, um, you know, these fads that you were interested in. So I was into like Formula One racing cars for a bit. So I used to draw Formula One racing cars, the old JPS and and that kind of stuff. And then that left. And then I used to watch like Starsky and Hutch. So I'd like start drawing them and their car, the Grand Torino. What, what was it? Ford Torino, I think, with the stripe down the side and... So, and then, yeah, I started getting interested more in, in kind of custom cars. And so I started drawing like cars with big pipes on them and fat wheels at the back and a little bit kind of, I'm not sure if it was that period in England that magazines actually had like Big Daddy Roth stuff, but I think we had the English equivalent. So I used to draw those all over my life. At school, we used to have to like cover our books for protection. Right. At school, because you get the books from school. So they'd make you cover them with like thick paper and then you could fucking draw on them and do whatever you wanted. So I started like, you know, covering all the books at school and like, yeah, custom cars, hot rods and stuff. And then it would be something else. And then finally, it was like, while I was at school, I got um, two books. I, th I got the, I think the first skin shows ever that, um, what's his name? Chris Roblowski brought out. So yeah. I would copy like Flash out of that. So that was probably my last year at school where I was like, really like turned on to to tattooing from school school age yeah. and then after that i had the the uh, donald ritchie book the japanese tattoo as well oh no you nice know that book yeah yeah i have heard of that one yeah i think donald john ritchie, had that one yeah. i saw it in his library so and then of course yeah i mean donald ritchie's book i think that was the step where it was like Fucking hell, this is just crazy. What is this? Yeah. Um, yeah. That was the spark, I think, from from kind of Japanese stuff. And but then then again, it was also like a little bit like kind of flying to the moon, if that makes sense. It was so far away. It was like this this unknown culture, this yeah just looking at these guys tattooed from head to foot it was it was super attractive but it was also like fuck i might as well like what else could i be an astronaut or something you know it's like <laughs> it had the same kind of connotation about it like how the fuck do you get involved in that yeah and and with machines back then you didn't have big magnums or anything so to achieve that same thing without tibori was 
yeah. almost impossible. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then like being excited about like, well, pff, yeah, maybe I want to learn how to do it by hand as well. And it was just like, fuck, it must take fucking years and years to do it. Yeah, when you, you, the only thing you'd ever tried was like three needles and a bit of cotton, you know, it's like, how do they do that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that very same feeling at the beginning of it all thinking like, yeah, just thinking about like, how the fuck did people do a sleeve after doing lining with a, a single needle and, and filling in with a five or something? It's like, oh. yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, those, the, the I mean, back to that original question. So it was, it was. I think I was quite lucky because I was quite good at sort of looking at things and being able to sort of do my own kind of, yeah, my own image of it, you know. So, but what what I did do was like, if I like the custom cars or looking at the tattoo designs and stuff, I was quite, quite, um, into like once I'd drawn a few of them I would keep going you know it was like I, I would enjoy the process I would enjoy this kind of yeah if I like something then I'd draw it and draw it and I'd look at something else and so then then came skateboarding that had a lot of art on the decks and yeah. stuff and um fantasy art that was airbrushed onto cars and uh, you'd see all that kind of Frazetta art and stuff. So, um, yeah, it was like a broad range of, I think, kind of similar stuff that exists in tattooing today. It was like you had tattooed cars and skateboards and other stuff, graffiti, I was like very interested in graffiti as well because I used to go on trips to visit my dad in New York. Um, so I would see quite a lot of graffiti and that was also very attractive. Um, I wouldn't say that I was in any kind of graffiti scene, but I tried a little bit, you know, like spraying on walls. Um, yeah, so I guess this was this was sort of this fundament, if you like, of this this kind of uh, the background of of all sorts of mixed underground art that that kind of fed also this this interest I had in tattooing. I don't I don't think I'd completely pinpointed it and said this is what I want to do. But um, yeah, it kept kept returning in my life. So so it was like this kind of um, message, if you like, of like what I could do. And and I think also at an early age of going to to Cologne and living in Cologne, this kind of step out of England and making it when I was younger, it was like wow, fuck! I was also hungry to kind of travel and see the world uh, um hank i think hanky panky um was one of the driving forces in in um pushing me to say listen you need to fucking see the world mm. you need to learn you need to go see people you need to like um so I'd started tattooing. Um, I didn't have a lot of traveling under my belt alone, but I'd had like a little trip to Amsterdam. I, I think I'd been to Spain and I used to go back and forth from Germany to England on my own when I was quite young. So um, traveling was not a, a kind of scary thing to do. It seemed like the more I did it, the more I was like, fuck, yeah, I'm not, and now I want to go to America. Now I want to go, you know. So I, I kind of plucked up this kind of courage to, to, to go and start exploring a little bit more and especially pinpointing to 
try and and focus a little bit on tattooing and try to sort of find a way to to get a little bit more inside that uh, no so the traveling happened before you worked at a shop or had your own shop sort of thing then for you. absolutely absolutely cool. i think um so so actually the, the yeah the oh, well what i would call my own shops i think you can you can probably say stuttgart is my first kind of original shop which is not something i made it was already there i took it over right? um but before that i was working a lot with other people i've worked in loads and loads of different shops if i'd worked alone it was like in my apartment in in new york um in my my um apartment in tokyo i used to work at home there and um when i was in england I used to work at my mum's house and I used to be a traveling tattooer. So I'd borrow her 2CV, a, a Citroen 2CV, <laughs> and have my little case and go and work in my mate's houses. You know, it was like, yeah, well, we've got like three, three, three of us here. We all want to get tattooed, you know? And I was like, great, I'll be over at six then, you know, like <laughs> set up and, and yeah, we'd have an evening talking about tattoos and, yeah, I've got some designs and, uh, you know, and it would it would be a whole evening until early hours in the morning sitting and tattooing in these friends' houses, you know, which nice. was fantastic. I, I loved it and had the energy for it and, and, and the word got out, you know, it was just, yeah, no problem. You want to get tattooed? Just phone this number, you know, like... <laughs> Nice, nice. When did you first uh, make it to Japan? You said you're in an apartment over there. So I'd been in, um, I'd worked in Germany. And then I, I, I said, after a couple of years of working in Germany in a shop, um, I'd been to America on a short trip. And then I decided, like, I want to go to to explore more. I want to go to New York and, like, see if I can do something there. So I was in New York for about two years. And I ended up working um, with Shotzi Gorman, mm. which was fantastic. At first as a, a guest artist, and then I stayed a little longer there. And then I went from... From um, America, I'd made some contacts on a convention, and I decided, right, here we go. This is my time to make this dream come true. I've got these contacts. I've got this girl that I know in Japan, um, somewhere to stay, and um, I'd already kind of prepared myself with kind of, I was kind of pen pal with Horiyoshi already. Wow. So I'd been writing to Horiyoshi and sending photos back and forth. And um, I remember having this letter or the last letter I got from Horiyoshi was this letter saying, um, yeah, look forward to, to welcoming you to Japan. See you soon your friend Horiyoshi, you know, and I thought, fuck, how fucking cool is that? You know, like I'm actually welcome there too. So, um, so I went there in, I must have been 21, wow. I think. So that was my 21 or 20, yeah, 21 or 22. So I, I made my, um, yeah, I bought a round the world ticket for like 700 bucks. And it went from the States, it went first from New York to Seattle, Seattle, Tokyo, and then Tokyo, Bangkok, and back to Amsterdam. So this was like a year ticket. So, um, yeah, I, I got to Japan and I just remember 
kind of getting off the plane and uh, your your first kind of images. I don't, I mean, for all the people that have been to Japan, it's like you get off the plane and and there's this huge airport and, and the, yeah, all these Japanese very friendly and very courteous and everything. So. Being an Englishman, it wasn't too difficult to be nice back and, you know. Um, so, but getting, like, getting on a bus and getting out of the airport, it's like you already see these, like, armed guards at the airport. And I, I, I can I never forget this. It's like, it's one of the first things I saw is, the, is you're going out of the airport on this bus and there's these dudes, they look like modern samurais, yeah, and they've got like full on body armor and like funny helmets and they're all standing there with big sticks and stuff and it's like, fuck, you know, where have I landed, you know? <laughs> but of course, Tokyo is very different. So, you, yeah, you have this long ride into Tokyo with the bus, I think it takes a couple of hours. And then you get there and it's just like, holy shit, the size of Tokyo and um, yeah, lights, lots of Japanese writing everywhere, very little English. And um, yeah, a lot of, of, of very delicious food, but stuff you've never seen in your life. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it, it was from the first day on, it was like, whoa, this is another planet, yeah. Um, but I, like I said, I'd, I'd kind of touched already a, a couple of people from outside. So it was like, okay, the first, the first few, few days there, it was spent wandering around and looking. And then I got in touch with this book publisher, Mr. Shimada, who brought out the Kurunuma books. And he became my kind of, yeah, he became a very good friend, but he was also very um, interested in, in like taking me around to see all the people he knew. And um, so from, from pretty much the start on, I was spending a lot of time with him, uh, going to visit so many different tattooers. I mean, I can't even rem um, remember all their names now. Wow! But um, he took me. He took me to to see. I remember in the beginning it was um, Hori Wacker, who um, ended up being quite a close friend as well. He was very young at this age, and it was just a small apartment in Asakusa, um, where actually he was very, very cool, um, saying, you know, like, I'll oh, bring your machines, bring your uh, designs and stuff, and you can do some work here. And wow. so it was like, great because I, I i'd gone to japan with a thousand dollars in my pocket thinking oh yeah i'm gonna stay forever you know like, <laughs> which goes in about two weeks i think you know? yeah. oh, wow. um, so i i started making these small connections with people where it 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 really did roll into something very positive and where I could do a couple of tattoos a week. Um, I could sit and watch these guys working with Tabori and um, also see their customers, you know, which, and, and being in this private atmosphere. I mean, if you, if you were on your own completely at that time, I mean, there, were, there was, I think there was a tattoo shop out in Yokosuka, which was near an American Air Force base. And as far as I know, that was one of the only t street tattoo shops at that time. So if you're walking around Tokyo, you wouldn't have a fucking clue where a tattoo shop was unless you knew somebody. Mm. And that was the only, and even if you turned up there and fucking knocked on the door, they'd be like, what the fuck do you want, you know? 
um, you have to sort of have, have had a, an, an introduction in some sort from somebody they trust. Appointment only. Yeah, very well. Yeah, the appointment only and also really kind of, you know, somebody who'll vet for you like he's a cool guy. Right. Um, and he's got something to bring, if you like, yeah? Not just as a customer, because they, I think they were also much more inclined to work on kind of um, Japanese mafia guys, or if you, would, yeah, if you're a famous rock star or something, you would get in there too. Mm. Um, but I think just your, your normal kind of Joe off the street, it was like they were very suspect, you know. Um, so that and that was just all potluck. I mean, everything seemed to fit together into in a puzzle somehow, and um, it kind of grew from there. And then I remember thinking, yeah, it's like I couldn't rely on these guys all the time to like make a living there as well. Yeah, and I remember my girlfriend saying to me. Well, I could get you a job as an English teacher, and I was like, "Fuck no, I didn't come here to fucking teach English." <laughs> what kind of tattoos uh, were people asking you for? Being being a Westerner, what kind of tattoos did they want from um, you? Did they want very, Japanese stuff? Very Western Western kind of ideas, you know. It was it was kind of traditional tattoos. Um. Yeah, skulls, roses, pinups, that kind of stuff. And and of course, I'd gone to Japan to like do dragons, and yeah. you know, which was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, tribals. I mean, I did everything there. Um, so I was going, I was going to see all those Japanese guys, and and kind of. Oh, yeah, just just watch them in awe, you know, like, oh, God, I can't wait to do this, you know, like, and then go home and do, like, a rose with, like, some crazy Japanese saying on it, you know, or the, the names of some friends or whatever. Um, but it was, yeah, it was great. I mean, I, I, could, I could make a living, you know, and I had no problem with that. What Even were they doing for stencils? Do... Sorry? What were they doing for stencils uh, uh, back then? Were they painting it on the skin with a brush? Um, yeah, pretty much. They would, they would draw, draw most things on, um, or they, would, they also had like a, a kind of hectograph. It was a Japanese pencil. For, I think it was from Mitsubishi. And it was a bit like that old kind of stencil paper. But it, Red and blue, paper. right? Red yeah. on one side, blue on the other? So they, they would like draw the design onto rice paper and then spray a bit of soapy water onto the area and just dab it on and like pull it off and you'd have, I mean, it was pretty tough stuff, yeah. yeah. But actually, I did the same thing when I was there. Because I didn't, I, I had hectograph paper, but at some point I ran out of it. And then I was trying to find more of it and I couldn't, I was take, taking it to shops and they were like, no, I'm sorry, you know, like, and I was like, oh, shit. And so I ended up, like, asking the tattooers, you know, like, oh, what's, the, what's the name of that pencil, you know, like, and then sneaking off and getting getting some myself. But, but yeah, interesting. Um, if I think about it, it was, but I guess they did mostly the, the important parts, you know, like the heads, uh, then the dragon heads or whatever they would do that and then start drawing the rest on them. Yeah. Yeah, incredibly much more difficult than today. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I mean like the stencil stuff is just uh it's been going crazy. I mean I I keep seeing like advertising and stuff of just have you seen those ones where they print out portraits now and stuff? It's just like, yeah, you know, what's that? 
Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I can. I can remember just being so careful with the the, the hectograph and using a, a a deodorant to put it on, you know. And then you'd have to wait for it to dry, and you could still rub it off in one shot, you know. Yeah, like, <laughs> green deodorant. <laughs> yeah, and now we have stencils that will stay for a month, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and no more scrubbing tubes for most people. And no more needle making, you know. Oh, there's people who have yeah. a, a career now of never having made a needle, never having scrubbed a tube. You know, it's, it's... yeah. I don't, I I think that was yeah. I mean, we we're curious. That was that was communication with those, especially in Japan. That was communication in those days. Um, was literally showing up with your box of tools and they'd be like oh, what's he got inside you know and i would pull out all my stuff and they'd be like oh, oh you know yeah <laughs> and and then they would they would also be like looking at the needles and stuff and it would be completely different to how they would do it and of course in my travel case i had a little soldering iron and loose needles and like solder and everything and a little jig. Yeah. And I'd sit down in their studio and make needles in front of them and they'd be like, oh, you know, and then they'd show me how they made their needles. And so, yeah, you also have to remember that, the, I mean, these guys didn't speak English, yeah? So it's like, of course, I've got the guy, Mr. Shimada or... Um, the tattooer that I've kind of become accustomed to. Um, but it was very, very limited in, in like actual vocal communication. It was all about drawing and, or, or just this looking at each other in the eye and like, you knowing what's going on. Mm. Um, and showing interest and, and, and enthusiasm, you know, and if they're like giving you a, a cup of tea or something, it was like, yeah, fucking great. Thanks. You know, like just wish I had some PG tips in my bag. As well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and beyond that, I mean, once this, this kind of tattoo story was, was, um, kind of over at the end of the day they they take you to eat and then they'd be enthusiastic they'd get the fucking craziest shit on the menu and get you to try and eat it and stuff you know and they they're kind of poking fun at you in one way yeah. but in another way they're like they're just trying to entertain and just trying to and it it was fantastic i loved it i absolutely loved it i loved the I loved drinking them under the table. I loved like, it, you know, you could give me anything you wanted food wise. I'd, I'd try it. Yeah, I'm game for a laugh, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. So, yeah, sometimes I remember this one sushi bar we ended up in and, and Hori Wacker had said to me like, oh, I'm going to order this, this thing um, for you. It's, it's live fish. Oh, in a little glass of sake, right? And I'm like, what? Live? And he's like, yeah, they're tiny. They're like this big. There's like glass fish with a black eye. And it's a super speciality. I mean, not, not many people have it in their restaurants. So anyway, this guy comes, he gives me this long glass with like a, a sort of shot of sake in the bottom. And the guy comes over and drops like 20 of these little fish in it. And they're just fucking going ballistic in this sake. And he goes, yeah, you just knock it back in one. Yeah? And I'm like, are you fucking shit? <laughs> anyway, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so whack down like, and you can feel it like while it's going down. And of course, it's going to get into your your acid in your stomach and stuff and it's all going to calm down but it's just this 
thing, you know, and you're watching them and they're like, oh my God, did you just do that? And, it, and you find out after that, of course, they'd never do it. <laughs> But now you're like one step ahead of them. It's <laughs> like, it's, oh, it's just, yeah. But uh, they were, they were, they were fantastic. I mean, and and this was all like invitations. At the end of the night, you know, you've sat there for four or five hours, trying yeah. to communicate with little games and and stuff like that. And it's just fucking brilliant to sit at the, the end of four or five hours, not being able to actually talk to them about stuff and, and use humor and, and not in a, in a vocal way, just in, in like actions and little games and, and um, yeah, they loved it. Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Back again. It's, uh, it's uh, some of my favorite things about traveling where, where it's in situations where we couldn't speak the same language together and we had to have this 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 primal way of communicating that was beyond words you know it's it's uh, it's quite cool it's magical isn't it it is it's yeah. absolutely magical and it, it goes to show too i think when you can when you can step over your own kind of shadow if you like of of this oh, you know, this this kind of, it's all new, it's all like, you know, and, and we're so used to certain things in our lives, yeah, and we get so comfortable to step outside the box and say, you know, like, fuck it, I'm just going to go for it. Um, it's, it's an enriching experience, and all it does is it, opens doors it opens many many doors and once you can do that there you're like fuck i can do that anywhere <laughs> you know it's like this it just all of a sudden it's like i remember thinking that you know the world is slowly becoming my oyster you know it's it's like i don't i'm not afraid even at that age i was i don't know if i i I did have a, a, a tiny bit of fear about things, but I think I was more naive in a sense. I was like, fuck it, yeah, I can do that, you know, like immediately, yeah. Because you'd had this experience, yeah. And it, I, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good for everybody to have these experiences. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit sort of, I don't. I don't want to sort of rub everyone everyone's noses in it at the moment because right because people aren't traveling. Yeah, we we're not we're not quite as free as we used to be. But um, it doesn't matter. It does, you know you don't have to be on the other side of the world either. It's like you know a lot of people don't know the shit around them. Yeah. So um, yeah, Japan. Yeah, and I and so I ended up going back there for um, regularly. I think I ended up going ended up going back there over a period of well over ten years. Oh wow! Regularly, so I guess if I added up all the time that I'd actually spent in Japan, it was something like five years. Wow. Uh, so um, it it was this um, fatal attraction. It also had to do with a woman, of course. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I I did have my kind of life there. I mean, I I I did love to be with this woman, but it was like also at the same time, I'm here to tattoo and learn about tattooing and Japanese art and the culture and the, the, the temples and the stories. And then, so yeah, it, it was actually, it was kind of paradise for me mm. for those periods and um, wonderful people. I mean, uh, I met people outside of kind of the traditional Japanese tattooing into more just the underground sort of uh, world where People like Hideo Uchiyama, who who was tattooing, and 
um, doing clothing design and jewelry and um, his friends musicians and yeah it was it was fabulous 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 stuff and basically nobody then in, in in those days were using machines at all for for tattooing right it was all tabori or were there some that were using machines um horiyoshi had started lining um so i guess horitoshi too um there were guys that i used to go and visit and and i'd be like what the fuck is that you know and they had their own homemade tattoo machines but they'd never um, seen like uh I'd a never seen machine. anything like it they were using like old sort of um train transformers oh yeah to yeah. run them you know those click 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 so yeah. it would go but i i i have photos somewhere um it's this guy and i guess his his approach was like he had like he built himself a, a machine where the needle actually came out of the bottom of the tube like probably this far what <laughs> and it was it was a flat kind of it was a tebori shader needle oh, that so he like made and stack. stuck on a bar Mm. And so he would dip it in ink and he would actually kind of just, instead of doing the poking movements, he let the machine do that. So it mm. ran quite slowly huh. and he would just rest his hand on people and just sort of run this machine over back and forwards, you know, as if he was doing it by hand. And it was wow. like, fuck, you know, that's interesting, you know. Huh. And he he was an elderly guy. I can't remember. I think his name Horimino, maybe Horimino. Anyways, yeah, so long ago again. It's yeah. just too many names. I've got that would actually be a project for this lockdown. Is just get all the. I got stickers and cards from everyone, and the, yeah, I'd, I'll admit it. Like. When I was younger, it was like, oh, I was so excited to be there. I wasn't too much in student mode to like, what's his name? Oh, I've got to write it on the... <laughs> no, it's interesting that they, would have, that they would have made their own rotary machines. I mean, it, it makes sense. They had a lot of electronics and stuff in the 80s like that. Uh, and, and I suppose they probably didn't have any old doorbells like like what europe had and, and america had with you, you know the coils the double coils i imagine maybe japan didn't have um <clears throat> i think yeah i mean they they weren't i th i think they were they were quite forward when by the time i got there at that time i think there were a lot of people who actually had like built their own machines right and if not got machines from somewhere. I remember looking at these old, um, they're, they're kind of like, kind of Yakuza sort of bit seedy political slapstick kind of newspapers. And if you look at them, there's kind of like all the, the sort of mob news if you like all oh, flash but fucking so and so didn't get on with so and so and you know you'd see some guys with a black car behind them and sunglasses and so and then you'd see like some kind of strip bar stuff and like bit of women in it and then in the back they had like advertising for stuff and you'd say i'd see like japanese writing and you know, some tattoo kits for sale kind of thing. Because oh. I'd ask Shimada. I, I mean, you'd see it because it was a little picture of it. Um, and that kind of stuff, they'd also write in English, you know, tattoo, like, and then loads of Japanese writing around it. Yeah. Um, so it, w it was funny because when, when like, Hori Waka and his family they, I mean, 
rightly so as well they kind of they, they kind of lit up as well after a while and and i remember meeting his friends from osaka and like he he was like putting the word out oh i know this guy from england this tattoo artist and he's kind of living in tokyo and do 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 so they would come over and they'd want to like show me their tattoos and stuff and meet me and um and then we we'd like spend time together and then they'd be like oh right now we want to talk business and i'm like okay so <laughs> so there would there would be someone there translating i think sometimes it was my girlfriend or um shimada the book publisher and and then it came up at dinner one time um we've seen a magazine with Spalding kit so but i think Spalding at that time i had a like bumper kit for like 1200 bucks or something right and they were like oh look we've seen this in in some uh, easy rider magazine they'd found it um we want to order and i'm like yeah all right i'll help you no problem you know? yeah yeah <laughs> so they'd be like yeah okay we want 20 <laughs> and wow. i was like okay but you're going to have to do the bank transfer and everything i i don't fucking know you know and i certainly don't have the money to do it for you yeah so yeah they dragged me into this thing and they were like yeah we want to get 20 kits and do uh, and then you next thing you know it's like they've got a little advertising and <laughs> <laughs> and they're flogging tattoo kits on the, this this kind of underground uh, Yakuza market or whatever. No, but no. It, yeah, it was uh, part and parcel. I, 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 in one way, I was a little bit like, oh, really? And I'm 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 the reason you're doing this. Um, I think they'd have found a way at some point to do it on their own and. Because of their generosity to me, it was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you out. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, it's good, good sure exchange. I'm, exactly. Because it I'm wasn't sure just that they needed, gonna be happy. They, they couldn't just have some Westerner doing it. It needed to be somebody who was in tattooing that could get this equipment oftentimes in those days. I mean, I guess Spalding basically would have sold it. Well, maybe they didn't just sell it to anyone. I know nationally, you needed to show a license yeah, no, like Spalding did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For you boys and girls out there. <laughs> Spalding was like, fuck. I remember the first order I made with Spalding. It was, to, it was like, this stuff arrived. I mean, they're very clever. Huh? So you get a machine, it's all set up. And that's it. There isn't any more needles or like anything else. There's no, there's no telling you how to clean anything. Yeah, yeah. And there's no like inclination. I remember that it's like funny. You do your first tattoo with that that setup, and of course it works a treat. And then you probably tried to clean everything and like you know put the needle back in, and you fucking dunked it on the way in because you have no idea about how to take care and. Yeah, and then the second tattoo you do doesn't work quite as good as the first one. <laughs> the dull needles. <laughs> anyway, when did you uh, get into um, uh, publishing and uh, and and making books? Um. Well, I've always loved books, as you can see. Yeah. Um, I think when I was um, also spending a bit of time with um, Mr. Shimada and he brought out the Kurunuma books and he was publishing calendars and, and videos and stuff about Japanese tattooers, I was like, oh, you know, this is just fantastic. And um, then... Yeah, in the beginning as well, like actually trying to find books. 
just to spark that interest it was like there were, i think there was just a handful of books on the market that you would actually be super interested to get um of course as time goes on um so yeah with that that kind of thing it's like well i, I kind of know so many people as well that i really admire and and people who produce a lot of artwork and, and stuff. Um, I said, like, you know, would you, would you like to make a book? Um, I'd love to like get involved in the process and, uh, and just looking for nice materials and, and, and seeing how that whole thing works. So the first, endeavor was was working with mauricio from brazil mm. um we made this dragon book and um of course i had no idea exactly how much work it is uh, involved in it so i was like yeah 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 we're gonna do this you know and like then trying to find the right printer and the right paint once you found him it's like getting him in, interested in showing you loads of paper and and what you can do and um, printing techniques and everything. It was just like, fuck, you know, right, this is really something. That, um, so what was bizarre was at the same time, I actually, I was, I, I guess you could say it was a bit like a, a midlife crisis. I don't know if it, it actually existed, but I guess, you, you know, you start doing crazy things when you're in your mid forties, you start thinking, oh, it's my last chance to like go on my skateboard again, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you start skateboarding again and you're like, oh my God. So it was great, but I went Phew! and just fucking landed a cracker. Um, and I completely snapped my right hand off. Oh no. So I broke my wrist good and proper. Um, so I had a metal plate in it and all sorts. It was, it was an absolute nightmare. I mean, looking at it, I was like, oh, that's it. I'm out for five months. Shit. I mean, it was literally like, it was a nightmare in my head and we just we just had our second daughter as well so my wife wasn't like gleaming you know <laughs> yeah. no more nappy changing i think that's the choice. <laughs> yeah. um so yeah it was it was like what can i what can i do without free time and it it was perfect in a way mm. it was like okay um, I'm going to concentrate on this book project and spent the next few months like just focused on this bookmaking computer work, talking to my stepfather. He's a graphic designer. And um, yeah, we got it together pretty quickly. And it was, <clears throat> it was super experience. And after that, it was like, okay, I want to think about what's, um, what makes more sense and um, yeah just just kind of dip a little bit more into different areas and then uh, and after that I made this Itchy Bay book with Itchy Bay um, after he'd spent time here he, he, he was coming and working in Stuttgart and um, one time he he brought a, a stack of designs and it was just like, what the fuck? You know, like yeah. I remember one day we spread them out on the hall, uh, on the floor down here and it just filled the whole floor. It was just like crazy. And I said, come on, maybe we should do something with this stuff. You know, people are going to love it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this was, this was like the beginning of, of, of Czech Demon Press, if you like. Yeah. Um, and I, I also liked the idea. I, I'd, I'd met people who were, who were doing the scanning of, of the originals and stuff, who were also printing and printing nice prints and stuff. Um, and I'd seen other people do it for sure. Um, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's fabulous too. So 
with, with just see and it, it's 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 a very small operation it's kind of a little family business you know like but it's 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 small it's like i i don't do crazy advertising i mean no. recently i've i've been trying to pick up a little bit just because i've not been working so much um but I've got a, a couple of a nice new things that are coming up. Um, I've been working on something with a, a tattooer called Marodi. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've heard his name, but no. he he's he produces um, fabulous paintings. So we've done a limited edition um, Fudo print of uh, one of his paintings that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Nice. And also a wonderful painting from Titi Lu. Oh, nice. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Very Keep cool. Keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> I was always really impressed with, with Checker Demon that, that you weren't going to some big distribution company or some big corporation. Maybe this equates back to the punk rock thing, you know, it's like, you had your band, you had your own label, you fucking did it yourself. Yeah. I, I like that so much more. I think also, like, um, also, I mean, this is, this is definitely not belittling anybody else or anything. It's like, I'm, I'm very happy to, to support people I know in the tattoo world, like who, who do just sell books. I mean, there's gentlemen flash in England. There's, there's Wendy in America, Basil, 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 Basil books. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a few other people. I have, I have no problem in sharing that if they like it, no problem. Yeah. Um, the more it's out there, the better it is for everybody. I mean, it's, it's, it's books to be used. It's not about, you can only get it at my place. So, um, but like you said, huge sort of distribution. I, I, I haven't done that kind of road. And the other thing is I, I also haven't kind of dived into the, the sort of productions of China. It's like, I, I feel, I've kind of learned about what's going on here locally and it, and it's kind of a bit sad actually it's like good printers are kind of getting harder to find um in your your sort of local vicinity not even local it's like in Germany it's getting less and less and less yeah They're all or put out of binders yeah or people working like doing anything special with them yeah? Um, so it's, it's kind of like, I guess, sort of pulling everything in and saying, you know, I'd rather pay a little bit extra and, and support these local guys, um, in the production of this stuff and, and sort of share, share the gains, you know, uh, rather than go sort of halfway around the world and, um, get it that much cheaper. I mean, it, it it has to be a lot cheaper if you're still going to ship it from China to here. Uh, it must be incredible. So, and books ain't the cheapest thing, uh, the lightest thing to move around yeah. either. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. Ethically, it's it's a much uh, it's a much better way of doing it. Like what you're saying, you know. Um, yeah. I got a friend doing his own comic books, and uh, I think he gets them done in the states, and it's the same. It's the same type of thing, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, he has to get them all shipped and everything like that, and he gets all the, the proofs made up and things like that. And, yeah. But uh, but it seems like uh, yeah, even in the publishing publishing comics and things like that, and all these major companies, these big companies now, they're they're losing money. They're not they're not doing good at it anymore. Like so so you've got all these independents doing crowdfunding and and making their own books and figuring out how to get it printed and stuff like that. And and um, and it's becoming like this. There's becoming a new boom, at least in graphic novels and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, of, of people doing it themselves, and it's quite exciting. It's kind of like, oh, this is a bit like this is a bit like yeah, the music it's great. industry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
I think also those, those kind of people, it's like they're, they're, they're also doing something that's a little special. You know, the idea of, of something that's a little bit more limited or, you know, of course, if it, if it becomes popular and stuff, it's, it's a kind of shame that, yeah, it's, a, it's not a bad thing that it, it kind of becomes available in slots, if you like. You know, it's like somebody like makes, makes a run of something and then it's all gone. And yeah. then it, it just becomes available for ridiculous prices on the on the second hand market. Um, yeah, all the good f for that kind of system. But it's also nice then to kind of surprise the people who are like, wow, I can't afford to spend a thousand bucks on a book or a print or something. Yeah. And then suddenly it appears again. It's like, oh, yeah, great. You know, like it, it's kind of making some people happy. Yeah. Um, but also this, I mean, this, this is also this, this idea that today has become like a fucking global market. You know, it used to be much more kind of like directed on if you wanted to sell this stuff in, in my kind of career beginnings, it was just conventions. Yeah. Yeah. You would take this stuff there and you would sell flash or t-shirts or you know, and then you might, you know, actually have people call you up at the shop and say, you know, like, how do I get hold of a T-shirt? And most people would say you have to come here, you know, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, which is the same with people today still. Yeah. Um, so that that that's just been a massive change, yeah? I think, in the last years is this kind of openness websites instagram you know like um facebook um it's just a bit available yeah it's maybe made a bit more of a hunger for something tangible now too that now that everything is sort of uh digitally available and things like that you know and i people want to people still collect things you know people still want that limited thing yeah yeah. And, and the more limited, the more valuable it sort of becomes, right? Yes. Which is a good, that's a good thing. I, I'm totally for that too. Totally. I, I think I have a lot of that kind of stuff too. If I really like something, it's like, oh yeah, I'd like to, you know, slip that one in the bookcase and get it out every now and then. You know, it's like a... <laughs> a whole like process to to sit down and like look at it and this is special you know like <laughs> yeah yeah not everything's on google that's what people don't get you can get very special things that you're not going to ever find on google yes. search yes 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 so uh what do you what do you think about um the future of tattooing now, now that now that everything's changing, I mean, it's a bit hard to predict, isn't it? Like what, what's going on? Like, yeah, I mean, I, you could have asked me that question ten years or more ago. I don't think I can answer. <laughs> I couldn't have answered it then. I was like, yeah, it's 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 really gone like into another another realm, man. I think what I what I sort of try to do myself in in kind of where it's going is kind of kind of pull back a little bit into like I want I I think I want to sort of hold on to a tiny bit of the magic that I experienced on my travels and going to see people where it was um yeah, you're not going to get that information as much unless you go and visit that person. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's like there's also a certain generation of tattooers that have had certain experiences in life that, have, that are making them storytellers, making them people who are like, yeah, they've got that little something. And 
nothing against it, but a lot of modern tattooing, it, it, it's coming out of kind of, you know, it's readily available. Nobody's like really having to fight for anything. Um, um, back to the book story, it's, it's like, I remember this, I got asked uh, something like similar to this um, for a magazine thing. And I answered it with, well, I went, I used to go to Japan regularly and, and have this thing where I'd, I'd have to get on the tram or the subway and go to like some area where there's like these antique bookstores and you get there and you're like fucking looking around and you don't understand a thing. It's like just all these signs and it could be a sign for like medical bookstore. You don't know. And you're going in there and see so trying to explain with your hand and feet about tattoos yeah. and like dragons and the, you know, and then they take you into a corner and they pull out a book and it's like on acupuncture and you're like, no, 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 <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> And then you stand and stay another two hours in the shop looking through every fucking book to try and find something, you know? Um, yeah, then you're spending hours in this area and then finally you have to go to a store and like, you know, like you, may, you might meet someone and you might have some noodles. And so, so it kind of, you have to invest time and experience to, to sort of find a book, you know? So it's not, it's not just about getting the book, but it's like you're actually in Japan and you're actually going through this whole process to get the book um, that you've, you might have heard of or seen somewhere or, you know, so it's this big kind of treasure hunt. And today, it's it's like you go on Google and you can find the book and you can push a button and the postie fucking delivers it a few days later. Yeah. And you unwrap it and you have a look and you're all excited. And then you put it down and, yeah, I'm not, I'm not spo speaking for everyone, but it's it's like the experience of that compared to the other experience, it's, it's just worlds apart. And, it, and I think it's, it's that kind of example that is, is kind of missing today. Yeah. There are, think, yeah, you, you're on something like there. More. Like, like though the book that got ordered online is more likely to stay on the bookshelf. The one, the one that you went and found, has got sentimental value to it and you treasure it and, and you, you keep referring back to, oh, I'm going to go to that book that I found in Japan and, and look at that again. Right. It, it's, it's, um, absolutely. And it, or, or it's got, it's got even beyond that. It's like kind of, yeah. Where did I first find out about it? Where did I see that? Oh, Horiyoshi. I remember I went to his studio and he sat down and he's like, opened a cupboard that's closed and brought this book out and you know it's fucking special you know it's like and he's like i'll show you one of my special books you know like <laughs> and it's like this yeah it's just something else and it, it's 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 just got i think it's the value yeah it's it, just yeah. the value of this whole thing is is so much more um so yeah but Where's it going? I think it, I mean, it's going even further in that sense. Um, you know, it's, it's like what a lot of the tattoo shops in Stuttgart, they look more like kind of a mix between a lawyer's office and, and Starbucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know, not too many designs on the walls, if any. Yeah. Very um, sterile looking. I yeah. Know. This, this is sort of, this is, yeah, this is another kind of world. But uh, yeah, you can't you can't generalize. I mean, there's there's plenty of people out there that are wholeheartedly doing what they do and having great experience. And um, yeah, like you said, COVID has definitely brought people around to like you know what what how how do I want to sort of approach 
what I'd love to do. Yeah. Do I want to concentrate on, on something a little smaller? Do I want to create a, a, an environment that's fun? And um, yeah. Yeah, hopefully it's bringing it a bit more underground again to, to have that sort of, uh, yeah, that mystique of knocking on that door and, and being like, who are you? You know, do you have an appointment? <laughs> you know? and, yeah. That 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 could be a good thing. That if if anything, you know, I'm I'm always trying to look for silver linings because I don't want to think about a future where we're all in hazmat suits and bubbles and and uh, you know got the health board breathing down our necks every day or something like this. You know, hang on a minute. Can I just stick this up your nose? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. Uh... But yeah, it's I think... interesting. I I used to go to Horiyoshi's studio, and he he'd be in a mask when I got there. This is thirty years ago, man. Yeah, and I'd be like, "Oh, are you okay?" Like, yeah. you no, know, and he'd, he'd just like say, "Oh, I got a cold. I don't want to give it. To you. Don't want to give it to you." You know, <clears throat> totally normal back then. Yeah, which I think makes for a very good. Um, you know, that's why Japan is doing so well, I think, with this whole thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're used to it. They've been do, that's been sort of an etiquette thing in, in Asia in general, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, you go on a big, busy uh, subway or something like that, you're going to have a mask on, most likely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, actually, I've got a nice story from... from so, so, being being a, a kind of getting to know Horiyoshi a little better, it was like I used to get invited over, what two or three times a week. So um, he would he would mostly kind of ask me to arrive, kind of at the end of the day, when I when I first got these invitations. So I'd I'd arrive there at kind of five thirty six o'clock, and he he would finish work at seven. So I'd have the, the time to like actually watch him work a little bit and like look through some of his books and draw a little bit. Um, and the telly would be on in the corner. It, it was, it was, I mean, it was a tiny, tiny little room. I mean, there's, there's a, many people that have visited. Um, but the atmosphere is just, it's, indescribable yeah so you're sitting in this tiny environment and telly's on and horiyoshi's like poking away and watching telly <laughs> you know it's like kind of it's it's amazing yeah wow um, so at, at the end of it um he'd be like okay we're 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 going out with a couple of friends of mine for dinner um and I'd be like, oh, oh, great, you know, like fantastic. So it, it was always a, a a restaurant where you could eat and drink beer. So we did something very traditional. You'd be sitting on the floor. Um, so he told me about, yeah, these these two friends. And I was like, oh, shit, this, this kind of uh, tradition of bringing a little something as a gift you know, like to meet these new guys. And I was like, oh, fuck, what do I bring them? And, you know, I'd looked around and I was like, you know, they always have such cool snick snacks. And I was like, I haven't got a clue what to take. I don't want to take them fucking tea or biscuits or, you know. So I was in this this little shop in the, the train station before I got there. And I was like looking around and I was like, Oh fuck! I bet it's some of his mafia mates, you know. So, I bought these like two little wind-up toys, and it was like cut-off fingers <laughs> with little legs underneath, and you wind them up, and they hop across the table. Perfect. And I, you know, in those days, I was like really kind of cheeky, and I was it was kind of do or die kind of attitude. Yeah. And, there was something in me that was like, yeah, I want to fucking see what their reaction is, you know, <laughs> like, or if I lose a fucking finger. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we go for dinner and of course it's like, there's these two guys sitting on the other side of the table, 
you know, like one of them had their t tattooed eyebrows. They would do that oh, often, yeah. like really short permed haircuts. And, <laughs> and they both had their like little pinkies cut off, right? So we sat there and we're like, you know, having some food and drinking away. And Oriossi is like looking at me and kind of nudging me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the two guys were like, oh, we have a little Luke Sam, we have a little gift for you, you know, and they, they gave me this, I think one of them was like a little plastic samurai head, oh, yeah. uh, you know, like a helmet. And the other one was a samurai sword, like um, letter opener. Mm. And I was like, oh, oh, arigato, thank you very much. Yeah, like, and I said, oh, and I've got presents for you too. And I like put these two boxes in their hands and they were like, wah, wah. and they were looking and they, <laughs> they were like totally confused. Anyway, they opened the box and they pulled these things out. And it was like, I thought, oh my God, is he either going to be fucking, what the fuck's going to happen, yeah? <laughs> and they both looked at him and they were looking at him and looking at him and then they were like, oh. And then they wound him up and then these fingers hopped across the table and there's like a bit of blood coming off the bottom. And they just fucking pissed themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they were laughing so hard. I've even, I've even got photographs. I was like, oh, brilliant. Like it's going down a tree. While it's in good favor, I'm like, I got their hands in the, on the middle of the table with their little fingers tucked in with these <laughs> fingers hopping off like fucking, oh my God, what a couple of beers will do. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh, that's awesome. So yeah, I think this 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 thing of um I think this is this is going back to um what do I think the future is? I think the future it's it's like everybody's a little bit different, but the the camaraderie with customers and visitors um of course it's impossible to like go out with everybody and but that there's these kind of special moments with certain people that it's like, yeah, you, you, you feel a kind of connection and, and it's like a convention when you meet people, it's like you, you enjoy their company. I mean, it's like, I, I must admit after meeting you in, in, in Montreux, it's like, I feel like I know you a little there. Yeah? yeah. So this, this thing of of like giving and spending time is is also it's it's part and parcel with with tattooing yeah um eating together getting to know each other a bit like yeah in the best circumstances like spending time drawing together looking at books um you know this this kind of investment in in a little bit more um i think that's that's something that i've been absolutely blessed with on my travels um horiyoshi is like he's the ultimate in this kind of um this kind of way of being yeah it's like if he if he likes you and he has time I mean, of course, his life has changed now. He's a little older. But at that period in my life, oh, my God. he It was like every time I went there, it was like we went out to eat and we met friends. And it was like every time I went with him, it was always something going on. Different food, you know, oh, this is my favorite restaurant, you know, like and and then after a couple of drinks as well, he was... I mean, just overflowing with with information and and just fun and curious and and just wondering about the world. You know, it, it was it was fabulous stuff. Yeah, absolutely fabulous. So I think the f future of tattooing. I mean, I, probably basically is what we make of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Don't, don't, I, I think one thing that I'm certainly not so interested in is, is like the bit that I'm not kind of very warm to, you know, the stuff that, that really doesn't interest me, what's going on out there. No offense, absolutely not, you know. I mean, the, the tattoo machine has like created this, yeah. It's definitely like it. It's it's a part to do with how tattooing's gone. Yeah, it used to be this very secretive kind of thing, and and this just Pandora's box got opened a long time ago. And, um, so it's it's like yeah, live and let live, let that happen. But it it doesn't mean that there's not magic. There's not a place for that something special, you know? Yeah, yeah, hopefully hopefully it becomes, once everything kind of gets back to normal again, I mean, it can go up one or two ways, I think. It's either gonna be like in the 20s when, when everything exploded and, and everything got crazy again, or people are gonna be cautious and, and both ways could be good because if everybody's cautious, all these, all these conventions, all these events, all this travel, it's going to be a little bit more smaller groups of people. It's going to be, you know, either which way. It's it, it could be a good thing, I think. Yeah, I I I mean I I yeah the whole tattoo convention scene. I mean I I yeah I wonder what you know when it when it's ready again to sort of take off and what it's going to look like. Is it going to be much smaller? Um, I've seen advertising for small, smaller conventions. Yeah. Um, to be honest, at the moment, I can't kind of see it happening with world travel at the moment. I don't, yeah, no. Me personally, but um, hey, that's not to say that it's not going to happen. Um, yeah, interesting. Or is it going to be cyber conventions? I mean, they did that last year. I missed it, but there was an online convention. I don't oh, know it? if you saw that. I didn't. Yeah. Know. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, I was actually. I was. I was kind of a bit pissed off. I missed it because. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you could actually go in the bar and like talk to people, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which would be my kind of convention, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll see. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, on, on that note, thanks for uh, taking us on, on, uh, on a journey uh, through, through the past and, uh, you know, re reminding us. You're us very about... welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. Um... <laughs> I'm sure we could go on all night. Right, yeah. okay. All right, Luke. I'll talk to you soon and uh, have yourself a good one. Thank you very much. And all the best to you and your family and stay safe.